Hello, I'm Richard Chambers, President and CEO of the Institute of Internal Auditors. I believe that investing in personal improvement creates career opportunities. Some call it making your own breaks. I'd rather say that investing in personal improvement makes you ready when the right opportunity comes along. Internal auditors should consider looking for ways to improve not just their own skills, but also the service they provide to clients, thereby raising the bar for the profession in general. Identify areas of specific need in your organization's audit function and create a plan to meet those needs. While those needs may vary greatly from one internal auditor to another, here are five priorities for 2015 that will apply to many and can be achieved by any reasonably motivated internal auditor. First, chart a strategic career path for yourself. If your plans include a successful career in internal auditing, this is a means of charting a strategic path for your future. There are ways to do this, but the key is to evaluate your proficiency regarding specific skills that are essential for success in your current role and for career advancement. This will help you determine what you need to do to close any gaps and move to the next level. Back when I was an aspiring internal audit professional, I maintained a career development plan the old-fashioned way, using a pen and paper. However, the IA Today offers its members a free online tool, the IA Career Map, which can provide invaluable insight on your career path and help you to get from point A to point B and beyond. A second priority for 2015 should be to provide impactful assurance on the effectiveness of governance in our organizations. The definition of internal auditing states that internal auditors should provide assurance on governance, risk, and control. While we generally do a great job addressing risk and control issues, many of us are less comfortable providing assurance on governance. Various internal audit executives and even a few audit committee members have told me that their internal audit functions do not provide adequate assurance on governance because their internal auditors may not necessarily have the skills to tackle such issues effectively. Major failures such as those at Enron and WorldCom and others clearly demonstrated that corporate governance failures can be lethal for a company. If your internal audit department does not have strong capabilities for providing assurance on governance, enhancing your knowledge and the abilities in this essential area might be your most important resolution for the year. A third priority for internal auditors should be to accelerate their detection of emerging risks. Today's risks are more dynamic than ever. In the current environment, annual risk assessments are often insufficient to identify emerging risks. We must therefore adapt our approach to internal audit planning so that we can audit at the speed with which risks will materialize for our organizations. I call this auditing at the speed of risks. Early detection is imperative, and even after emerging risks are identified, appropriate internal audit coverage must be scheduled and undertaken, and management will need the time to address these issues. If a robust management system is not in place, you may need to identify leading risk indicators, develop risk dashboards, increase the frequency of risk assessments, or take other measures to help ensure your organization knows what's on the horizon and beyond. A fourth priority should be to build deeper relationships. According to all the experts, strong working relationships are crucial to effective internal auditing. It's not possible or necessary to develop deep friendships with everyone we meet, but our stakeholders must be comfortable coming to us with problems. We need to be able to deliver messages that are frank and transparent while maintaining that comfort level. Building and sustaining productive relationships can mean success or failure for internal auditors and their organizations. According to a Deloitte white paper, The Broken Triangle, symptoms of the disconnect between internal auditors, management, and the audit committee include financial restatements and missed earnings, material weaknesses, regulatory noncompliance, contentious or ineffective board meetings, turnover, excessive litigation, and even failed alliances. Simply, those disconnects must be overcome and that requires effective two-way communications. Finally, a key priority for internal auditors in the year ahead should be to stay on top of cyber risks. As we saw in 2014, internal auditors must be alert to significant technology risks that can impact objectives, operations, or resources. It lies at the heart of modern business risk and controls, and even if your internal audit function includes IT specialists, 
it's not sufficient to count on these specialists alone to handle every issue related to technology. We all need sufficient knowledge of key IT risk and controls and available technology-based audit techniques to perform our assigned work. The risks are growing and evolving, seemingly at the speed of light. So if your understanding of technology was adequate for last year's challenges, you may not be ready for this year's challenges and you may need to up your game and develop an even deeper understanding of current and emerging risk and controls and governance. Regardless of the resources you use, don't overlook the significant risks that cybersecurity issues pose for your organization in 2015 and beyond. Whether you adopt all of these priorities that I've outlined or only a few of them, the beginning of the new year marks a natural opportunity for us to step back and identify priorities for ourselves personally and professionally. I'm Richard Chambers, President and CEO of the Institute of Internal Auditors.